After doing the rebuild on that Western Digital 160 gig drive, I was able to get it to start imaging on the imager itself. Now you can still see that there's some errors that are showing up. Uh, we're only looking at the center screen. We're not looking at the one to the right of us that's processing a different drive. But you can see there are still errors that are showing up. It's not completely stable. Very few drives that you get the heads rebuilt on are stable. But in this particular instance, it is actually imaging a majority of the data. The Deep Spar Disk Imager is a very valuable tool for doing this because you can see sector by sector as it's copying. And anything that's green, you do not have to come back and copy again. So only the bad sectors are going to be the ones that are missing, the ones that are brown as it goes through this selection here. Any of the green ones will continue on and will not have a problem or even need to be read again. You can think of the Deep Spar Disk Imager as the BitTorrent for hard drives. It's filling it in sector by sector by sector. The drive itself, you can see here the source and the destination drive, uh, it ran better when I flipped this drive upside down. So there's always some minor alignment problems whenever you deal with a head replacement. And in this particular instance, the drive worked better upside down than it did right side up. So that's the way I've left it. I did have to use the actual donor's board as well. I, the original board did not work on this drive as well as the headset itself. Now I had, prior to actually doing this replacement, swap the boards in this particular instance to see if, uh, if the existing hard drive before I did the head replacement would work with the board, with just a new board. Uh, I was pretty sure I already knew it was a head error and uh, confirmed that it was still a head error even with the new board. So I went ahead and did the head replacement and I still had to use the donor's board itself. The original board still did not give us any results. See we're getting quite a few errors here. I can avoid some of these errors as I am doing this recovery by skipping uh, uh, to a further section of the drive. Now you can see it's picking up and so we'll come back and do those other sectors after we get the good ones. So anytime that I hit a spot where there's a really large amount of sectors that are bad, I'm going to skip those so that I do not further damage the drive. I want to get the good stuff I can while I can. You can see that the disk imager is kind of mesmerizing as you watch the data itself. Seeing it in hex as it goes by sector by sector, um, the screen is only refreshing about every uh, 10 milliseconds or so. So it is not, uh, or 100 milliseconds, it is not showing us every single sector in hex as it goes by. Uh, it's just giving us a display of that every 10 milliseconds or so, something along those lines. I don't remember what I set it for, but uh, it's in the configuration. You can set whatever you want for your screen refresh time. So this drive, I will let go ahead and continue, and then we'll make multiple passes at it to get all the sectors that were bad sectors. But this was a successful head rebuild. model and information from the drive I just did the replacement with. You can see it's a new drive, August 2008. Going to be a perpendicular hard drive, single platter, 80 gigs per platter, 80 gigs per side.